Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra, book 2, episode number 9 and 10 reactions. Okay, um, the previous week I was a little bit busy so I wasn't able to record a reaction to The Legend of Korra. But from this week onwards, it'll be all fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, I will continue. So, okay, the previous two episodes was were one of the best two episodes, I feel like. Because it actually gave us like the background information of what an avatar is this is something that we never even got in the original avatar the last airbender uh, as well so i was heavily impressed with the two uh, episodes pre previous week and it's probably it is i think probably the best two episodes in season two because season two has a had have had a rough start and it kind of like you know went going in that typical direction of a very I don't know like the, the the plot i was not liking it that much but these two episodes was like just fantastic and i feel like we're again going to get again into the drama and all that you know like nonsense again and from here onwards but um like <clears throat> book two is almost at the end these are the last four episodes this episode nine and ten so i think it has 12 episodes this book so yeah we're almost at the end and i've heard that from book three onwards it again gets better so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, those two episodes were one of the best. We get to know about Rava and Vatu. Rava being the uh, light and Vatu being the darkness. And they were, <clears throat> you know, almost like balancing each other. But um, one, who is the first avatar, he, you know, lets, uh, what's, what's the name? Uh, the Vatu, yeah, Vatu is the name of the dark spirit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he lets Vatu like, you know, escape. So everything kind of goes into chaos, this and that. We also get to know about what an avatar is, how they can bend. You know, the lion turtles used to give them the elemental powers. And um, <clears throat> after, like, you know, letting loose uh, Vatu, uh, one, like, decided to cooperate with uh, Rava and get all the element po elemental power within him. And, like, you know, Rava is going to keep it and he's only going to get like you know it within himself when he's able to master them and that's why whenever rava went goes through one uh, he gets into this avatar state where he could use all the elemental power and that explains what the avatar state is as well and so many questions gets answered and then we get to know about like you know the I don't remember the name that they call them but there's like a time when they have a big fight rava and vatu and for the next i think like thousand or something years they said whoever will win will rule over the world and the other one will go into sleep and then after like a huge amount of time the other one will wake up again and then there'll be an again a big fight so <clears throat> one sealed vatu but now this time it's it's time for the battle again I think it was something called convergence spiritual convergence or something i don't remember what they actually called it um but uh yeah time has come again uh vatu is out and now they are going to fight again and this time it will be Korra. so yeah like that was a really interesting like you know story and really interesting background Korra knows everything now Korra is going back to her place and deal with unalok so yeah anyways let's get started and uh, this is episode number um uh, nine of uh, the legend of Korra book two okay another thing i forgot to mention i kind of never thought about it before now that i'm thinking about it Va um unalak probably has something to do with vatu because we remember that scene where he goes into the spirit world and um, I think uh, Esna and Desna, they kind of say like, wait, you were in the spirit world? And I do remember in the previous like, you know, episode, episode 7 and 8, them saying like, people cannot go to the spirit world. Only spirits can. So that would mean, I think, um, Unalok is actually not Unalok. He's some kind of a spirit or maybe he's actually Batu. I'm, I'm just, this is just a guess. You know, I, I never thought about it before. But anyways, okay, uh, enough talking. Let's get started. This is episode number nine. So yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, okay. Harmonic convergence. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's the question. He needs evidence. The guide. <laughs> what is that thing? Ooh! Furry food. Oh, that's a very cute rabbit. Oh, they, they come in different colors. <laughs> Wait, are those spirits? Oh, I thought those are actual animals. <laughs> Rock throwing content. Oh, where is it? I don't think anyone is excited. Nobody is excited. Ah, Cora is back. She's back. <laughs> okay, now apologize. Oh, yeah, they don't know about it. <clears throat> yeah. This sounds like some kind of a light novel, uh, like, you know, title or something. It is a light novel title. Means a guy, light novel. Hmm. Oh, I thought Unalak himself is Vatu. Oh, he's trying to... Okay, that makes more sense. But then how did he get into the spirit world? He's a human, isn't he? Inside? Oh! Okay, yeah, oh, I forgot something. Um, oh, no, 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 that's not the, okay. They cannot go to, okay, I'll talk about it later. Oh my God, yo, <laughs> that's it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so they can go in this place. Humans can enter here, but I think the actual spirit world they cannot go, can they? Like I, I remember them saying something about like that in episode seven or eight. Whoa. Oh, okay. Bolinston still doing his movie. Come on, please. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, over there. Okay, thank God he.
Wait, do you have any evidence? I hope he at least have any have some evidence. Yeah, yeah, true. No. He oh my god. Okay, calm down. <laughs> you <laughs> Wow. Well, it's like, wait a minute, what's happening here? Yeah? <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Ver um, Bolin. I guess that is counts as a proof. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, that's true. What? Oh no! Oh my god! Well, haha! Oh, wait, really? Oh, is this the same place? Oh, interesting. I didn't recognize it. Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, don't worry. <laughs> okay um all right is that ang's face damn All right, Tenzin, calm down. Now he's getting a bit cranky. Wait, why are these things? Oh, it's trying to go, leading them somewhere. <laughs> Wait, those are spirits, aren't they? Okay, don't say it like that, because, yeah. Tenzin, you're the one who's talking. Tenzin, you're the one who's talking. Oh my god, this guy. I don't think he ever did. Yeah. It's anxious that that's why. <laughs> he never was able to, I think. Yeah, okay. Hmm. That's true. Okay. Oh yeah, she can... Come on, Tenzin, don't! Alright, come on, let's go. Yep. Okay, there you go.
What are these butterfly bunnies? Dragonfly bunny spirits. <laughs> okay. Very recently, I think. Hmm. What is that? Grandfather bunny? Tenzin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> oh my God, he's going to get in there and oh, great. He's trying, he, he's going to start a war or something. Like, he's opening this, like the spirits will come in. Oh, I guess that's his plan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is his plan. Okay, never mind. Oh! What the hell is wrong? Shut up! Oh my god, this guy is talking like Tarlock. Not Tarlock, but the, but the, the father. I forgot his name. Tarlock's father. Yeah, there you go. Well, you're not strong enough, I guess. Oh my god, Varric. What is this place? Ah, that's nasty. Come on. <laughs> oh my god, even after all he did, I can't hate this guy. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so you want to buy him? Yeah. Oh my god, come on. Threatening you. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Well, <laughs> he goes back to his thing. Oh boy. Boom, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> ah, he's. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, she... Him. Oh yeah, the statue that she threw. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Wow, look at this. This is... Yeah. Boom, <laughs> too. Yeah, this place looks ancient enough. 
Hmm. Nice. Okay. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. I'm sure they'll come back. Oh my god, what's happening? Oh no! Oh my god! Whoa! Are these like... Oh my god, are these like bad spirits or something? I... Oh, the bats, okay. Even bats. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, they, they are dark spirits. Oh, so this is what he meant by cleansing. Oh my god, yo. I don't know. Cleanse them? <laughs> Alright, come on. Oh, she, she's doing the, yeah, thing. That Unalak does. There you go, it's... Yeah, okay. Nice. Alright, I think now the spirits will be back again. Those spirits. Funny spirits. True. Yeah, that's true. There you go, she apologized. <laughs> right. Hmm. Okay. Oh my god. I really oh okay, this is a pun. Um Great. Wow. Oh! What the hell? Yo, pronunciation. Wow! Oh my god, they're turning this on him. Okay, at least he... Oh wow. Oh yeah, okay. The hell did those come from? Yeah, they planted this here. Oh great. Oh boy. Wow. 
So. Oh my god, this. Okay, I'll talk about it later. It's like book to dump down all the characters. Like, they're just accepting that. Yeah, he's. Oh my god. Oh my god, yo! <laughs> Kaya? Yeah, that's true. Harsh truth. Uh, he's, he's afraid. <sighs> Come on. Yeah, come on, just... And Koro will be there with her, you know? Maybe in the future. Okay. Oh. There you go. Wow, my god, look at the scenery. Oof. Yeah. Hmm. Yet. Oh great, obviously he knows. Because he has a connection with Rava. Yeah. That that means yeah, Cora's alive. Yeah, you just Yeah, you just wait here, you know? She's a calm. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Um, so, yeah, this episode, um, uh, I'm, I'm glad, I'm actually happy that uh, Cora is like, you know, kind of acting a lot more sensibly than she was before, you know, like the first few episodes, she, she was just crazy completely, she was just, uh, what do you call it, angry teenager, just <laughs> rejecting everybody and just, you know, like, doing whatever she wanted to but yeah after you know after getting amnesia she is a lot more collected <laughs> and after meeting Rava and the whole Vatu situation after knowing that so that's one thing I'm glad about and the few things that I am actually <sighs> you know one thing that is really bothering me is it feels like this episode uh, like you know this book too is actually like you know dumbing down the people um the biggest um what do you call it example is chief Beifong. she like like what is wrong with her she is supposed to be like we saw her in season one like, you know she's such a tough individual and this like you know in this book it seems like she's basically the side character who's just like Oh yeah, like someone tells her to do something, she's like, yeah, this must be it. As someone tells her that, oh, um, Marco is the bad guy, uh, they go and search his room and they find these stuff. She's like, yeah, you must be the criminal here. Like, what did, like, what happened? Like, you, you, you people know each other, you know, like in season one, and like just like that, without with an evidence that flimsy, like that's one of the most, what do you call it, like. One of the most apparent, uh, apparently put evidence. You know, they just come here, find out the bag and everything, and they're like, "Yeah, this guy is the criminal here." Like, obviously, it's very apparent that that evidence was planted there. Like, otherwise, is 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 
Is Marco that crazy that he would just like keep that type of thing in his room and Asami would be there with him as well? And like, like it, it, it baffles me to see that like, Chief Beifang is just doing nothing. She is just accepting everything. And um, like these two guys, these two cops, these two cops are just annoying. Those two guys, you know, they're just annoying as hell. You know, they just, I don't know where the hell they popped up from in book two. And they're like constantly annoying us, annoying Marco, just like, you know, just doing their own thing. Like, I really hope they lose their job after seeing the book two. I'm pretty sure they will after everything comes to light. I really hope they lose their job and they leave the Republic City. I don't want to see them again. Like, they're one of the most annoying characters. Like, like pesky, like, you know, side characters. Just, like, constant annoyance. And, <clears throat> like, not only that, like, the whole thing, like, everything. It, it feels like everything, everyone's just become dumb. Everyone's just dumb now. Like, you know, nobody understands, like, no, everyone's just, oh my god. Like, do you, I feel like the only character who's <laughs> using their brain is Varric here. Like, Varric is the one who's just manipulating everyone and just making them dance on their like you know like on his palms and you know what i'm happy about that like if, if these people are that dumb like i feel like they need to be manipulated by varic for them to actually learn that yeah you should not take other people's uh words at in face value you know chief beifang should realize that like this guy this marco he's like you know my, under my what do you call it um uh, you know uh like my subordinate yeah and um, I should at least trust him, you know, not just like, you know, because like an evidence has been planted there, just go and arrest him. But I guess like, you know, now uh, the, he'll probably go to trial after this. I'm not sure what's going to happen, going to happen to Marco. He's probably going to go to trial and there will be like a judgment or whatever. So like, I really hope they actually like, you know, like, like Chief Beifang actually things like you know like yeah this is like kind of fishy let me just investigate a little bit more i really hope she does that but i don't know the way this is going i don't feel like that's going to happen like oh my god like oh boy like the whole thing with cora was like one thing in the first part of the uh, book like you know the whole thing with cora and cora was being a constant annoyance and now she's all settled down i guess and as soon as that ends this starts and the whole thing with Marco and Asami is just, I don't know, I, I feel annoyed whenever I look at those two now. You know, like, what is up? Like, what is wrong with them? Like, oh my god, like, so many things, it's just... Yeah. Okay, um, so this episode here, the first thing is, like, we see Jinora can see spirits. And she's not telling anyone. Uh, Cora comes in and Cora actually explains everything to Tenzin and like, I'm, I'm glad they, they actually talked and Cora actually apologized properly so because yeah he needed she needed to do that like Tenzin was the one who just who taught her from the beginning and like you know in the first part of the book book two she acted so badly with him so I'm I'm happy that she actually apologized in a sincere manner Okay, yeah, she talks about that to uh, Tenzin, and Tenzin is like, all right, so we're going to go to the spirit world. <clears throat> and then we shift to Unalak and Esna and Deska. Eska and Desna, I think that, or was it Esna and Desna? I think it was Eska and Desna. Anyways, um, we go to shift to those two. Now, here's the thing. Um, I feel like I actually... I mean, didn't they say in one of the previous episodes that people cannot go to these spirit world or was i wrong i feel like i'm kind of uh mixing something up over here but anyways you know they kind of go inside and like i thought like uh what's his name unodok himself was um batu you know and uh i thought about it i thought it was something like that but then like i realized like this episode they kind of showed us that no he is not batu but he is the person who is going to free Vatu and I guess that makes a lot more sense because you know Vatu was sealed so yeah okay <clears throat> so yeah that was that and oh Eska and Desna goes in and uh, Unalak is like yeah we need to you know open the portal and 
<clears throat> yeah, okay, and then we get to Bolin, Marco, and Asami. And they were just talking. Marley, Mar uh, Marco is like, oh, you know what? Barrick is the one who's the who's at fault here because he was the one who manipulated everything. And I'm like, dude, do you have any evidence? Like, you don't have any evidence and you're, you're just telling them this? Like, it wouldn't work. Obviously, it did not work. Asami is like, what are you saying? He would, you know, attack his own ship. And Bolin is like, obviously not. Like, like all these things. And I'm like, why did even Marco just... Like, I thought, like, at, at that moment when the whole thing came out, Marco did not say anything in front of Asami. I thought he did that because he was waiting to gain some evidence and then, you know, like, confront them with it. And I guess the ev only evidence that he has here is those... Like, you know those det detonators and bowling himself says like oh like that's not a proper evidence like like anything could have happened like maybe they just just look the same you know like you cannot prove something like that so like that's not a proper evidence you need like hard proof and like, marco is just like no you are the ones who like like these things like you know like i feel like like what, what? What did like that? Marco could have just said this, and when uh, like you know he confronted Varric with Asami, he could have just said this at that moment. Why did he like? You know, I thought he was he did not say anything because he was going to gather some evidence or something. He didn't do that. He just oh my god. But anyways, I guess you know this is another thing. Um, so it didn't work out, and Bolin's like, wait a minute, aren't you? <laughs> are you and Asami dating? <laughs> And he's, he's like, like, what the hell? Like, Korra just left a week ago. Like, what's wrong with you? And you know what? Yeah, true. Like, you know, I'm 100% I'm with Bolin. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, are you, like, what? Like, I, I don't know. Like, you know, this whole thing of Korra, Asami, Korra, Asami is kind of annoying me now. And I really, I, I don't want to see him with Korra again, you know? Like, this, this is kind of annoying. Like, getting annoying. And, like, he, he could be with Asami and do whatever the hell he wants to. Like, what was... Oh. Okay, that was that. And then Korra is just in, like, you know, in, 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 the, in that place. Uh, he, he, she, and Tenzin are trying to, like, you know, open the gate to the spirit world and go there. But Tenzin actually reveals that he was never able to go there. And that was, like, the only thing that he was never able to do. And he feels ashamed because of that. Because his dad has so much expectations on, on him. And that's when, uh, like, Akaya previously kind of realized that Jinora is probably hiding something. So she's like, oh, Jinora must have something to tell us. And Jinora is like, yeah, I can see the spirits and I have a bigger affinity towards them. Then she says, like, oh, we need to go this way because that's the direction where the spirits are pointing to. Us. At first, Tenzin was like, are you really sure of this and that? And <laughs> as Bumi said, that... It, his pride was a little bit hurt and you know what i don't blame him for this because he actually was very passionate about this and he always had like an inferiority complex of like oh my dad expected me to you know carry on his legacy and go into the spirit world and i wasn't able to you know, fulfill that now <clears throat> uh, like that's that's why he i, I think he probably felt like oh like i tried so much and i'm unable to do that and you know so easily able to do it like I'm, it's probably it was something like that and as i said i don't blame him for it like you know so many years of training just not working out it's sad you know like you, you cannot do anything about this and this is like a human heart he, he probably felt a little bit embarrassed as well at that moment he's probably like like even my daughter can do it like i cannot even after so much training i really am not suited for this and uh yeah so she was he was a like a little bit kind of like you know, saying like oh will this really work this and that oh and then we get like you know to the other perspective again um unalok is trying to open the portal and esna and desna then both of them kind of not i think the the, the guy i think desna yeah he gets knocked out and it's not it's because like we need to get out of here like you know like we need a healer and Unalak is like nah i don't care like you know come like you know help me out and like i'm glad that the eska actually took desna and just the left 
because like Unalak is, I guess you can call him another. Um, I forgot the name of Tarlok's father, Tarlok and Amon's father. I forgot their name. Um, his name, like that guy. He's he's basically that guy, you know, like just using their kids for his own uh, like games. Like what the hell? <clears throat> so I'm glad those two left. Just just left his dad over there doing his own thing. All right, then we shift to Varric, and oh my God, Varric is just as. Uh, as I said, like, you know, I really cannot hate him because he's that crazy kind of guy and I feel like he, he's the only interesting part of this book. I'm talking about Varric. Like, all the other things are just, just so, like, you know, like, I don't know. But I feel like the whole thing with Varric, I, I, I really am unable to understand what he's trying to do. I think he's probably just trying to, like, you know, expand his business. That's all he cares about. And at first I thought, like, he was, maybe he was, like, you know, kind of, um related not related but maybe he was working together with unalock and then like now i think like nah he, it's nothing like that he he just wants to expand his business and that's what he's doing like <laughs> my god and here varic is like oh like marco like you know my friend mm, we are like you, know, you should join us you know like we we have like an empty space and we could hire you because Bolin and Asami is already with us, so like, they should work together with us. Otherwise, who knows what could happen to them? You know, like, haha, <laughs> like it's not that I'm insinuating anything, but who knows? Maybe something might happen to him. So it's better you come with us. You know, like you'll be able to keep an eye on them, and everything will be fine. And <laughs> I thought Marco was going to like you know accept it for a moment, but he's like, no, I don't care. Like just left. That's why I said, like, you know, like, I, I really like the whole thing Varric is going, like, you know, the whole Varric thing that is going on. It's it's kind of like a fresh thing. I like the not of the same, like, you know, Marco Asami drama or, like, you know, Korra being, like, you know, rebellious teen. It's it's kind of like a different thing from that. So I'm kind of glad that Varric is here. <laughs> like, even though I don't know what his actual plan is. If, if he has some evil plan, then, like, you know, I'm obviously against that. But I don't think he has some evil plan. He basically wants to expand his business, I guess. I think that's basically it. We'll see. So, <clears throat> all right. And then we go shift back to Denzin's perspective. Uh, the spirits lead them to, like, an ancient air meditation place. And Denzin starts cleansing that, that place. And spirits, dark spirits come out. Korra purifies it, and this really shows, as Korra says, like, you know, even though Unalak is a bad person, it's no joke, his spiritual powers is no joke, so, yeah, that's one thing that I was able to gain from him, and Korra can, like, you know, kind of purify these spirits now, so, and here's where she actually apologizes, I'm really glad she did that, you know, because Denzin was for him, you know, like, he teaches him, her because he wants to help Korra, while Unalog teaches Korra because he wants something from her for his own gains. It's obvious, like you know, like the like Tenzin is definitely the person who Korra should never have said those type of things. That was disrespectful, and she apologized, and I'm glad about that. Oh, and then we shift back to Marco again, and I don't know what the hell is going on. Marco's just ah, uh, like. The whole thing with Marco and Asami, as I said, like, you know, I really hate this thing about the legend of Korra. This whole Marco Asami, Marco Asami, uh, Marco Korra, Marco Asami, like this whole thing. You know, what would be the best thing if all of them broke up and just, you know, like, I don't know, they just stop this whole thing. Like, this drama is kind of unnecessary at this point. Like, you know, they're just doing this drama for the sake of it. And, like, I don't know. And... I feel like Marco, like, as a person, Marco's okay, an okay kind of guy, I guess. But in this thing, I, I really don't like Marco at all in this, in this de department. And, like, as, as Bolin said, like, it's barely been a week that Cora left and look at you. And, yeah. God damn. So, in comes Steve Beifong with... Uh, what's, the, what's the name of those two? I don't know their name and I don't care. Those 
gobs they're like haha marco what are you hiding here let's see like obviously as if they did not plant it over here and <clears throat> like they're trying to like you know shift the whole triple threat thing they're like oh you interacted with them that means like you know like you must have done something and the information that we got is like you helped them steal stuff and now here's the thing as i said i feel like they completely took away chief bayform's character from book two like she has been present from the beginning of this season but all she did was just say yes and no and just like you know like just got annoyed on marco that's all she did in this season up until now this is the eighth ninth episode that's all she have has ever done and we, we've seen her in season one she, she's like an amazing character but in season two it's, it's as if she, she i don't know she forgot all the character development she went through like it's like you know it, it seems like all, all she's doing is just standing and like you know just ordering others and just screaming at marco and that's all she's doing this season and i don't like that you know after that amount of character development in season one this is what she's doing now so that's one thing another thing is as i said like you know everyone everyone feels really dumb here like, you know suddenly these two person just comes in and just accuses him for doing marco for doing something illegal and like you know like chief day fong just accepts that uh asami is like you know getting like what, what can i say like asami is also kind of suspecting that it seemed like that you know like marco in the end says like i did not do it and asami is just st staring at him like you know in that manner so it feels like everyone just left their brain somewhere and they are not really thinking so like I, like they're, they're just doing this to create more drama as far as i could see you know like and then like then we shift to Tenzin again and we can see that Tenzin is unable to do it and now there's two things that's playing like you know over here first thing is like Tenzin really is concerned about Jinora she doesn't he doesn't want her to going into like this like you know this unknown spirit world where no one knows what could where, where what could be in there uh, she's he's actually concerned for her safety that's one thing another thing as I said like you know a little bit of uh, inferiority complex and a little bit of his pride was wounded when he got to know that yeah i'm unable to do this but my child can so what have i been doing up until this time so and it's good that he accepted that in the end he was like you know what maybe i am not meant for this maybe jinora you were the one to carry on this legacy so go ahead and yeah that's that's good that's maturity you know like accepting like you know one person's own limitations and you know like accepting that and coming into terms with that that's maturity and yeah i'm glad she he did that and cora and jinora then goes to the spirit world and then we see unalok talking with vatu he is like oh vatu i've failed you <laughs> and vatu's like no they're coming you know like just don't worry cora's going to come here and like she has already entered the spirit world so yeah i guess um what's the name unlock unlock will just have to wait for now okay so yeah that was episode number nine so let's start with episode number 10 so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to which user your preference let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one Mm. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> A new spiritual age, okay. <laughs> Come on. And Cora's there with her, you know. Uh 
Oh. Wait. True. Um. Yeah, muscles. <laughs> Creation stuff. All right. <laughs> okay. That's a weird way to say. Uh -uh. Wow! Look at this place. Yeah, I don't touch that. Oh. Okay. Calm down, don't run off. Oh no. Oh, sorry. Um, the net, the other one, yeah. Oh my god, what's happening? Okay, yeah, she cannot bend. Oh no, oh, what the, what is that? Oh. Uh, whoa! Oops. The spirit world, a wild place. <laughs> what? What was that? Is that a dinosaur? <laughs> oh boy. Okay, grab her. Grab her. Oh my god. You're getting... You got separated. Oh no. Oh my god, what's... Uh... Oh god. Oh, oh my... Whoa, what are those... <laughs> Bora, run, or, yeah, you don't have any bending here. Great. Ah. What the? Wait, did she? What the hell is happening here? Wait, did she become young or something? Oh, there you go. That's a bunny. <laughs> yeah. Damn, he's big. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. house. Oh damn. Oh really? Is is the library? Okay. 
Oh, so Korra became like a child here. Whoa, what the? Did she do that? What happened? What is that a dragon or something? What is that? Baby dragon? Oh my god, it's Iro! <laughs> there he is! <laughs> Wait, he's still alive? No, he's in the spirit world, so what's happening? Like he shouldn't be alive, he should be very old. Wait, who? Ah, uh, the T. Spirit case. Oh, damn. Wait. Ah, oh, okay, okay. That's why she's at my teapot. Oh. Uh, Rava's. Wait, what is Iro doing here? Like. I think she's he's not supposed he's he's either supposed to be very old in the real world. Oh there you go, the spirit the foxes. I wonder if we'll meet the owl here, the owl. Oh boy, there he is. <laughs> Great. Oh wait, he's still here. Oh no, he's dead. Okay, obviously. Oh boy. So what's the new rules? What about the 10,000-one thing? Hmm. Oh. Really? Oh wow, yeah, definitely. Yes. Wait, how did she know that? She, she's, she's a child. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh no, you're fired. <laughs> you're fired. What? I I gave you the knowledge. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. But I thought she was going to he was going to be mad at Aang. Like Aang or the Avatar, you know? Hmm. What what is that, Balasar? <laughs> hmm. Many years. Oh. That's why he's still young. This really looks like such a good thing for Iroh because you know he wants, he's always a chill guy. 
and this is perfect for him. Calm down, calm down. Whoa, what's happening? Oh no, the negativity I think is affecting them. Ah. Oh. oh, so this is like a, this reflects the inner. Yeah. That's why she's probably a child now because Oh! That's why she's like a child now. She's feeling afraid and you know, like that's why is her inner... <laughs> oh. <laughs> mm, just wish for it, I guess. Oh, okay. Oh, like a video game. Yeah. Yeah, this is a side quest, you know. Hi, Ryopik. Oh my god, this is like that dark place. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yes. Hmm? Oh, that's why. Okay, that explains that. Hmm. Oh my god, it's Unalog. That's why he... What the hell? Yo, this owl! It's a snitch! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> oh, great. Great, this owl... Oh my god. Oh. God damn it, you little. Uh, yeah, he, she'll have to do it for herself. Hmm. 
Wow. Okay, I'm really glad, like, you know, we met Ayo here. This was the problem with the Legend of Korra, you know, there's no Iroh here. That's why everyone's so confused every time. Like, if there was Iroh in this series as well, like, everything would have been so better, you know? There you go, like, in one episode, it's, it's all it took was for one episode for Iroh to come and, like, you know, just fix everything. <laughs> Okay. Oh, oh. Hmm. You know what? Remember what Ayo says. Shed your light on them. Yeah, they. Uh... Okay. The the darkness is going away. There you go. <laughs> All right, let's go. Oh, it's all like you know, shiny. Look at that. Like, you know, the darkness is almost gone completely. Yeah. Is this it looks like a dragon i think it's a dragon oh no a phoenix oh, oh no what a, what is that it is a dragon there you go oh no never mind oh Cora's back <laughs> look at that Oh, those things are following her? Nice. Oh boy, there you go. Well, Unalock is waiting. Oh my god, Unalock's going to give Korra a jump scare or something, I feel like. Oh my god. All right, we'll see. <laughs> oh my God, yeah, Jinora's here. Oh my God. Oh. Oh no, they're all turning. Ah. Oh my god. Oh, what the hell is happening? Why not beat you up? Is, is that a third option? Oh God. You know what, just, I don't know, like, trick him somehow or... Oh great, he, okay. Oh, well, Vatu is going to be released now. Damn.
Oh! Great. Well, obviously, that's what he was going to do. Like, but I guess he didn't. She didn't have any choice. What the? Where, where's the bird? Where was that bird that brought Cora here? What? Uh... Oh my god. There you go. I was, I was just saying, where's the bird? Oh! God damn. Oh, she's back. Oh. Nah, very bad. Oh. Take, it'll take a while for her to come back. Oh boy. Well, we need to go back again. Okay, you know what? This this episode was a lot better than the previous ones. I feel like like all the episodes that does not have that weird drama, you know, like it, it kind of goes well. But like and I I guess like an you know, idol coming here was another reason why, you know, like this episode was a lot better than the previous one, which had was just you know like drama, drama, and drama. Like my God, and I'm like you know I I don't know what happened to Marco there, but just. We, we, we probably have to leave him alone for a moment uh let him do his thing and but now let's just focus on cora okay so this episode uh at the beginning we see how we can tenzin and um you know like siblings were just talking about yeah like just you know we'll we'll, we'll be here just if you have if you don't want like you know any help just tell us and uh, Tenzin was a little bit afraid and as he said like you know like I'm, I'm 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 scared because we don't know what is in the spirit world and I just let my girl like you know a, a little child just go there and I being the father I wasn't able to do anything and yeah okay and then we go to the uh, Jinora's perspective and Cora and Jinora are inside the spirit world and um, yeah a lot of things happens here first of all there's like weird creatures i don't know what they are they look like moles or are they i don't think they, they are moles i don't know what these were but those things you know just pop up and <laughs> because cora stomped on one of them they were like yeah <laughs> you came and you were like you know trying to you know destroy our houses and when Cora tries to bend they're like oh you're even trying to attack us so yeah get him get her and you know while like it's completely like the whole thing was very <laughs> like chaotic Cora and Junora get separated and Cora ends up in like a forest kind of thing while Junora is like in the the field now here's like you know the thing like Cora kind of reverts back to a kid over here and I feel like this was like a symbolic way of showing that as, as they said like you know like this is a place where your inner feelings or whatever it actually is something that gets physically shown if you feel sad if you feel like you know angry if you feel darkness in your heart the place will turn dark if you feel light within your heart it'll the whole place will turn brighter so I feel like that moment when she was alone in the forest, she probably felt very small and helpless at that moment. And that like, you know, kind of brought her back to like a childlike stage where, you know, when, when you're a child, if you are just like in an unfamiliar place, you feel afraid, you feel scared, you feel small. 
that's that's what happens so that's basically her inner you know like her inner feelings at that moment that's why she became like a child at that moment well she's helpless and <clears throat> she's just scared and while Jinora is trying to find her Jinora meets with that bunny and she's like can you help me out the bunny takes her to someplace else <laughs> and um okay now Cora here meets a little bird now at first it thought like you know it seemed like the bird was like this ferocious monster or whatever but when she kind of like you know just swapped it away we saw like it was like a little bird and that's what Iroh says later on like you know if it, it at, at first a glance everything might seem like you know scary but if you look at it properly you'll see like most of these things are very harmless and that was basically what happened. The little bird was just a little bird and it seemed as if it was going to attack Cora. And here we see Iroh. At the beginning, I was really confused. I was like, what is Iroh doing here? There's a few things that was going in my head. I was like, wait, did he just relocate to the spirit world or something? Or what happened? Did he die and then come to the spirit world? And what's happening? And why is he still the same as we saw him when we saw him in Avatar? He hasn't got older, gotten older, maybe a little bit, but not that much. And as far as I remember, uh, Aang from a child, like, you know, like, it's like, like, became big and like, you know, like grew up and he, his children are even like, you know, have children of their own. So like, I'm, I was pretty sure like Iroh was dead. So I'm like, what is Iroh doing here? What, what happened? And he kind of explains that in the end, like, you know, what happened. So basically he... He left the actual world after he finished, completed everything, all his duties and all everything. And he came here and I feel like spirit, the spirit world is just perfect for Iroh. You know, he has always been the peace loving, you know, old, <laughs> old, uh, you know, like person who just loves eating tea and uh, not eating, sorry, drinking tea and having like a calm, peaceful time. And this place seems just fit for him. And, um, yeah, okay, so Iroh is here and Iroh talks to Korra and he like you know shows him the tea her the teapot where Rava was supposed to be and like you know she's he starts talking about stuff to Korra. <clears throat> now on the other side, Jinora is in the spirit lab uh, in the library. And oh my god, we saw that guy who got like you know stuck here. He he died, obviously he like you know he like what else could we expect like he he's, he's a normal human being so he died over there that you know like he i guess he he loved like you know knowledge and reading books and stuff so i guess he he died doing what he loved to do so i guess you can say for him it was probably a great time but who knows like like you know we see his skeleton i feel like where is that Yeah, I think he, yeah, he's just like, you know, with his books, he just died. So he died what he loved doing, I guess. Now, Jinora is like, oh, I need your help. You know, like, uh, I want knowledge from here. And uh, the spirit, uh, the owl is like, you need to give me some knowledge. No, sorry. Uh, he says like, no, I won't, you know, help you. And Jinora's like, I have some knowledge for you. And he's like, it's impossible because I know everything. And he, she just talks about the radio and stuff. And he, <laughs> the owl is just like, oh, I thought like little, little people were inside the radios who sang. Wrong information then. <laughs> but now here's one thing, like, you know, like I was kind of surprised here when he was not letting her go in. And then when uh, Jinora says like, Oh, I'm here on behalf of the avatar. He's like, oh, you're here on behalf of the avatar? Why didn't you say so? Go ahead. I was like, wait a minute. What's happening here? He's supposed to be mad at the avatar because of what happened, you know, in Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> the thing that happened there. So after listening, listening, hearing, getting to know that the avatar is involved in this, he would have been, he, I, I thought he would be more angry. He would be like, like, no, definitely not. Then like, get out. I don't want to see here anymore. But he's like, oh, okay, go ahead. And I'm like, what's happening? Like, it's like, what? 
At, at that moment, I didn't realize what's going on. But in the end, we get to know why he allowed her to go in. Uh, as soon as he got to know that the avatar is here. Oh boy. Okay, so. All right, we get, get back to the other perspective again. Uh, Iroh just playing Pai Show with uh, the spirits and having tea. Oh, <coughs> the things that he loves doing the most. And Korra, they kind of starts they kind of showing her <coughs> insecurities, her fear about Jinora and just like, you know, like not being happy about the whole situation. And here Iroh talks about how her inner feelings will be reflected here because she's an avatar and she's supposed to be the bridge between those, you know, the spirit world and the actual world. So her emotions will be shown here. And <coughs> like as soon as he he got negative emotions in her all the spirits became like ferocious and everything so when she was calmed down again everything went back to normal and yes like and again iroh says a lot of good things here he says like oh um you should you know like you should look at things whatever whatever, whatever things like you know looks scary at you to you at the beginning if you point your light towards that you maybe you'll find out that it's nothing to be scared of and yeah that's true you know like i remember uh when i was a child there was this um you know in, in, in like a dark place i saw some shadows just there and i'm like damn that's a ghost but then when i turned the switch my light switch on i realized i was just like you know, a tree casting a shadow and that's basically it like you know like the darkness is scary so if you point your lights toward that, you'll find something new, maybe. You know? Maybe you'll find out that it's nothing to be scared about. Yeah. Okay, and then we get, go back to Jinora again. And my god, Unalok is here with the owl. And I'm like, okay, that's why he allowed her. As soon as he got to know that the avatar is here, he allowed him her. Because Unalok is being helping him out. Uh, uh, not helping him out, sorry. He has been helping Unalok out. And they were like, you know, connected. And he says something about like, oh, like Unalak has been a lot good to us than the Avatar. And I'm kind of baffled here because, you know, he's supposed to be this wise owl, you know, like this wise owl of the library. But he's acting pretty dumb because, you know, like he, he says here that Unalak has been a lot good to us than Avatar, the Avatar. And he, he I don't know what, what goes through his mind, but he is not realizing the fact that if Unalok, you know, like, uh, what do you call it, Unalok's plan comes true, not only the human world, but the spirit world will also get screwed over. So he doesn't realize that. I don't know why he doesn't realize that. He's supposed to be a wise owl, but he apparently doesn't care. So, like, <laughs> this this thing, like, you know, like, this owl thing, I, I in, in season one, I guess he was, like, you know, like, obviously, he allowed Aang and his friends to get in, and they kind of betrayed his trust i understand that but just because of that you are doing stuff like this like doesn't make any sense like he's, he's basically he's, he's going to you know like just because he's supporting unalak he, he probably realized that yeah like i screwed myself over as well because this guy he doesn't care he's he's going to um plunge the whole like you know thing like you know the whole spirit world and the human world into chaos and maybe he'll not be affected here because he's just like in now you know like in this library on his own but i don't know like that was like a real big surprise i was not expecting him bringing unalok here like for a moment it didn't even register in my mind like i just saw him unalok standing there and for a moment i wasn't able to register what's happening i'm like wait a minute what's happening whose voice is that then i realized like oh that's unalok like i was that shocked at that scene you know, when the owl just brings Unalak in because this completely was unexpected i was not expecting him to do that but yeah i guess and yeah and then okay so we go back to iroh again iroh and Korra. and iroh he says that you know like you're trying to find something you are unable to find it so maybe do something else you know and maybe you might find a, a different path and <laughs> this reminded me so much of you know video games rpg games you know any type of 
you know, uh, video game where whenever like you know like you have like these side quests or side missions <laughs> and this is like a side mission to Korra like bring the little bird to its home <laughs> and then the main mission is like find Jinora and like you know like Korra is a little bit stuck he's like she's like how can I f complete the main mission so uh, Iroh is like do the side mission first maybe you'll get a reward from that and that reward will help you out to go and do the main mission and <laughs> yeah that's basically what ended up happening you know like he took the she took the bird back to its nest and the bird became this big bird and then it is going to help Korra out to find Jinora and go to the um you know like the spirit portal so yeah like these two were connected in a way <laughs> like <laughs> Iroh like you know like he's as always he knows everything and uh, I'm, I was really glad we got to see Iroh in this episode you know and like that's what i'm saying you know like this I, I after the last airbender had iroh in it like so many things were like you know did not evolve into a drama and this you know like complicated situation just because iroh was there to guide the people you know like he guided i think almost everyone you know he guided zuko he guided Toph, he guided ang and who like you know he, he he almost guided everyone towards the right path and that helped so much out you know like like here, like I guess Stenson is kind of like a guide, you can say, but obviously you cannot compare him to Iroh because Iroh is a lot wise with a lot more experience, a lot more, you know, like what do you call it? Yeah, like Tenzin obviously, Tenzin is not at that level. Tenzin himself has some problems of his own. You know, like the whole inferiority complex that goes on within him and so many things. Tenzin has problems of his own. So he is kind of like a guide to Korra, but he is not at that level. So Iroh, like, you know, being, like, just being present in Avatar The Last Airbender helped so much out because he really helped people to go in the correct path. And that's why it did not evolve into some unnecessary drama. But here, look at this. Book 2, Season 2 of Korra is just complete chaos because everyone thinks that they are correct. That's basically Season 2. Like, you know, everyone thinks that they are correct. And they're doing whatever the hell they want to, especially Korra at the beginning. So, like, I, Iroh just being here, just like, you know, like, directed, guided Korra towards the right direction. And look at this, like, this whole thing became so good, you know, like, Korra knows what to do now. And she goes up, like, you know, towards the mountain and she finds these three, like, you know, spirits, like, you know, these dog spirits or whatever who were very scary at the beginning, but Korra was like, no, Iroh told me look at them you know, shed light on them they are not scary and yeah they become like little puppies or something <laughs> <clears throat> guided them to the uh, on top of the mountain he put the little bird in it the bird kind of you know, fused together and became a bigger bird and like you know Korra, the birds and the puppies were all on their way to the spirit um, portal to <clears throat> to seal it and here Korra meets Vatu, and Vatu's like, yeah, like, we'll see, you know, like this, I'm like, you know, like, I'm, I'm going to get you. And Korra tries to <coughs> go and seal the portal, but no, um, Unalok is here with his new hostage, which is Jinora. And obviously, like, nothing you can do about this at this moment, like, like, obviously, I'm, I'm sure Korra knew that Gino uh, Unalok would not let Jinora go away, even if she... He unseals the portal, but you can't do anything about it. Otherwise, he'll just you know take away um, Jinora's soul. So she unsealed the portal, and yeah, like as always, Unalok is just as nasty as ever. He just doesn't keep his promise and tries to like you know take Korra's soul away as well. But thankfully, the bird was there. But the bird just kicked away Unalok, and yeah, like. I feel like that's probably the best way to defeat Unalok. Just, I don't know, like, just get him from the back. <laughs> you know, like, get him when he's distracted or something. Just, you know, whack him away or something. So, otherwise, this guy is like a trouble, something. And <clears throat> the bird takes Korra away, and Korra is back to the real world. Tenzin is up. You know, scared, Tenzin's like, what happened to Jinora? Korra is troubled as well. 
uh, probably the next two episodes it will be the final two yeah those two are the final two episodes of this season so i'm sure something is going to happen jinora is probably going to be fine and Korra will just go there and you know like defeat vatu or do something i don't know something maybe seal him back again or something we'll see but yeah so that was it that was this episode as i said this episode was a lot better than the previous one mostly because there was no drama necessary drama in this episode uh, Iroh was also here and I was like, you know, listening to Iroh and his wisdom is always a good, you know, like a good episode. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. This is my reaction to uh, The Legend of Korra, book two, episode number nine and ten. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know and I'll check them out. So, yeah. So that's it thank you guys for watching again and i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes which will be the final two episodes of the legend of korra book two uh yeah book two so <laughs> see you guys next week until then goodbye and have a nice day